Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to the uh, weekly webinar VEDCAP training sessions. Um, my name is Mike Tran, and uh, today I'll be training you on the longitudinal uh, module. Uh, now, longitudinal uh, module itself is uh, fairly, um, I guess, uh, it requires a lot of time to get really deep into it. Uh, we're going to just be scratching the surface of the uh, longitudinal project and just to get you a little bit of uh, uh, training to get you started here. Um, so, if you have a lot of, um, if you have, uh, you know, detailed questions and whatnot, um, please go to our research portal um, or email us or call us um, and. Or if you're on the portal, you can just post a message. You can just have a conversation, conversation back and forth to be able to um, answer your question. Um, again, so let's go ahead and get started here. We only have about 15 minutes or so to um, get this um, session completed. So first thing we're going to do is create a new project. Uh, we're going to go ahead and start with training database um, five. So uh, once you're in a, uh, once you're in your project. Um, what you have to do is um, you're going to have to enable the project as a longitudinal project here, this option. If you want a little bit more details, uh, you can click on this question mark to tell you more about it. Uh, but I think um, if most most time if you, if you turn it on, then I assume you're going to know what you're doing a little bit here. So um, when you enable that, you have a bit more options. You notice that... Um, you get the ability to, to designate and define events here. Okay, so what we want to do is we want to go through with the steps. Uh, so the first step is to complete the uh, you know options for the main project for the project itself. Uh, second thing is we're going to have to define um, the uh, instruments. So we have to add on instruments. Click on, on online designer. So we only have one instrument right now. Uh, uh, but the thing is, you know, in most longitudinal projects, you can have multiple instruments. So we're going to try to emulate that with multiple instruments. We're going to add another one. So I'll call the second one clinical data because we'll be collecting clinical data in the second one. Um, and maybe we'll have an administration form finally. All right, so we've completed our design for the longitudinal project. We'll have, we have three instruments. Uh, our first instrument has some default subject ID, first name, last name. All right, so let's go ahead and click on Project Setup. Um, so again, with the longitudinal project, what you want, what the intention is that the project requires um, some data to be collected uh, over time. It can be collected once a week, once a month, once a year, but the fact is that it has to be collected over time, multiple times. Um, and if you only need to collect the data once, then it's not really longitudinal. Then you can just have a classic model where it's just collecting the, uh, the data. Um, so uh, not, uh, not over time, basically. So. Um, in our scenario here, we've already completed our, um, we've already turned on the options for longitudinal, so it's a longitudinal project now, um, and it's a longitudinal database project because, um, well, actually, it could be either or or both. So in this case, this project can, can contain survey, which it has enabled. This option has been enabled, so our first form is enabled as a survey. So we're collecting first form through survey. Anyways, um, back on topic with longitude knows that uh, right now what we need to do is go through the, with the third step to define our events. Okay, as you can see, uh, step one and step two is required. You have to have uh, event names, so you can have uh, any name you wish. You can have uh, first visit, second visit, third visit, or initial visit, etc. Uh, just for the naming convention. So. For me, it makes sense to have it named a little bit more in tune to what the project requires. So initial visit for my event one, first event. As you can see, you require a day's offset. So you know, initial day, first day, second day is 
uh, as you know, offset one. So it'll be if it's Monday, it'll be you know, um, Wednesday. So anyways, let's go ahead and I want to do week one. Okay, I don't I don't need a lot of these these events that's already been filled out for me here. Yeah, find a visit. Let's go ahead and leave it as is. So we have uh, three events with unique event names. You can use these event names to capture the variable or the field information within the form. I'll show you that at the very end. Okay, what we need to do next is we need to designate, designate an instrument for the events. So we click on that and begin editing. What we're saying is that we want to uh, either have initial visit, week one visit, or final visit. I'm going to opt for uh, my first the uh, my my first survey, my first survey instrument. That uh, those events will collect all the data, all the data for that form. So each of those events will have this form be available. Week one, this form's available. Final visit, form's available. So I check it off. For collecting clinical data, we're only collecting that on week one. So let's just say a patient comes in on the week one. Uh, this event, you know, the entry, data entry person will collect data for these two form. And so if we go down to a third form administration. I only want that form to be available on the final visit, and uh, that's our, you know, our project's requirement. We only collect the administration form on the final visit. Save. So let's take a look at how we um, how we complete data entry for uh, a longitudinal project. Go ahead and click on Add Edit Records. All right, so let's go ahead and add a new record. This is a new screen where you get to choose the events you want to enter data for. So if you want to enter data for the initial visit, you would click on this little circle here. And if you want to enter data for week one for the my first survey, you would click on this circle here and so on with the other circles. Uh, obviously, the business rule is going to dictate the where you collect data. I assume it's going to be um, you know uh, sequential. So let's go ahead and start with initial visit. So enter subject ID. And complete the record. All right, so our first instrument's data has been completed for visit one. Um, if you, let's go ahead and click on uh, week one. Let's say week one, I'm at initial visit. Week one for this one. So let's go ahead and click on week one event. So the week one event has these two instruments available, and we have to do the data entry for both of them. The reason for that is that um, we've enabled that. We've enabled that in the designate instrument for my events. You see that? So that correlates with the available data. So we go back to the record we just entered here. And go into the week one uh, event. Those instruments are available, and we have to enter data for those. You can just click on the circles here if you actually want to get straight back into the events. See that? Click on the event here. Go back into this form. Um, so again, with the uh, administration form, if I just wanted to click on the final visit. the My First Survey instrument and the administration forms available. Uh, what we can do is we can turn that off where uh, on the final visit we only have administration. And how would we do that? Let's go ahead and change that right there. That's how we do it. We update. We check the appropriate checkbox. And so now we go back into the record here. And we yeah, let's just say we go in um, the final visit. We click on it to enter data. You notice that only administration forms are available now. So that's how you would uh, modify and update um, the longitudinal um, 
uh, project here. All right, so let's go ahead and move on next. What we can do is we can um, define and designate instruments, but then we can also um, schedule uh, the patients to be coming in at a certain time for longitudinal project. So let's say if we had to um, schedule, you know, uh, and we can't really have it uh, varying as far as date-wise. That would be an ad hoc date. Uh, for a longitudinal project, um, it kind of goes in line with the uh, repeating uh, theme, where if you enter the schedule, you know, maybe a patient is supposed to come in at 10 o'clock on Wednesday every uh, week. Well, you can't have a week. Uh, you can't have 10 o'clock and then 2 o'clock on uh, the next Wednesday, et cetera. But let's, uh, let's go ahead and see how that works out with our Longitudinal project. So you would have to enable this scheduling module for Longitudinal. So let's enable that. All right, so let's go back up. This option is available now. Let's click on that. All right, so um, in this screen, what we see here is that we can add a new record, um, record 5. So we only have four right now. So what it's saying is it will add one for us if we want to, or choose an existing one. Let's choose Mike Tran here. And we want to go ahead and schedule it. The start date is when? 21st is fine. Let's generate schedule. So we start on the 21st. What we can do is in a week one, we can do it. Uh, let's just leave it default there at 11.35. Okay, I guess I have to move it a little bit here. That's fine. All right. And um, so again, if you if you had multiple, um, basically 11:33 will always happen for week one event. All right. So you can have. Um, let's see here. You can have change 12:31 for final visit, and that will always happen. And go ahead and create schedule. So now we can look at the scheduling or the, I'm sorry, the, not scheduling, but the calendar uh, module. What you see is that the um, events has been added to the calendar uh, as an administrator or a coordinator of the project. One could look into this uh, view and see, you know, all the visits that's going to be happening or patients going to be coming in. They can kind of administer that um, workflow, that process, and they would click on, um, you know, for for record four, initial visit, um, who who's going to be coming in, um, Michael Tran, view the schedule. You can also go directly to the um, record itself on this in-person's data. Click back. So it's really neat. Um, I think it could be useful for uh, many of the projects if used properly. Um, and actually, you can have some notes and details here. Let's save some details here. And that's it. All right, so the final thing we want to show you is that um, what you can do is you can use some information. Um, let's just say, you no, know, the first name on this instrument. You want to use that first name to pipe it in into another instrument. Uh, so how would we do that? What we need to do is we need to grab the um, instrument. Oh, I'm sorry, the uh, the event name first for that instrument. So event name is initial visit arm one. All right. So if we want to have that shown on the clinical data form, then we have to say that. Here we go. Let me show you an example here. Click and add new. So if we have to first append the uh, instrument name first, and then the variable last, first name. So what this is going to uh, have is that it's going to get the first name from the record. All right. So uh, we'll, it'll have Michael right here in place of this. Save. All right. So if we go add Mike, and if we you see that um, we've added it to the clinical form, I mean clinical data uh, form. So if we click on this, 
Michael showing up here. See that? Okay, that concludes our um, longitudinal training for this week. Again, we have uh, training every week. Um, uh, as long as it is any topics, we'll be covering them and we'll be updating and uh, training uh, you guys to keep everyone up to date and um, hopefully hopefully you will join us next week for um, additional training topics. Um, we have multiple training topics here. Um, so here we go. Um, we have all these training topics that are completed and it's in progress but uh, we'll, we'll be covering many other topics later. So uh, please join us and um, that's it. Have a good day.